Candace Owens is a far-right political commentator who has repeatedly sounded the alarm about the big bad SJWs on college campuses. They're a threat to you, they're a threat to me, because these are fascists who are against free speech. They're always protesting and trying to shut down speeches of people that they don't agree with. So in this clip here, she's going to explain, forcefully so, why we shouldn't try to censor people who we disagree with. We should let them speak. These college campuses have essentially become islands of totalitarianism and fascism, and they create a lot of hurdles if and when you do want to bring a conservative speaker to campus. It's a major area of problem in this country, and it's one that has to be countered and tackled. And it's not only that, it's what they're teaching when these speakers come to speak. It's fundamentally anti-Americanism. Linda Sarser is welcomed on every campus, and I am not. So the underlying implication there I think, is that she thinks this is a form of censorship. To not allow someone to speak just because you disagree with them, that's censorship. If we allow the Linda Sarsours of the world to speak on college campuses, then we should certainly allow the Candace Owens of the world to speak on college campuses. Otherwise, that's a form of censorship. Now, with that being said, as a lefty myself, I've never been invited to speak on a college campus ever, so it's good to know that I'm also a victim of censorship. I'm going to put that card in my back pocket for now in case I need to conveniently invoke the victim card in the future. But with that being said, the point is, this is a form of censorship. We shouldn't shut down the speech of people just because we disagree with them. That's her overall point. Now, we'll stick a pin in that conversation and come back to it, but let's just take a moment and speculate why a college campus wouldn't necessarily want to invite someone like Candace Owens to speak. Um, maybe, just maybe, this is only my theory, it's because she says a lot of ahistorical, downright idiotic, factually incorrect things all the time. Case in point. And these are all words that have been said over and over again about black conservatives when they have the audacity to think for themselves and become educated about our history and the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. What the hell did you just say? <laughs> that, who would want to invite someone like that who says something like that to college campuses? I mean, that's insane, right? So this is her shtick. This is what she does. She is constantly trying to disprove the fact that Republicans have been racist and they still are very much racist. It's the same thing that Dave Rubin tries to do. He tries to prove that social conservatives are actually more tolerant than lefties, which is just laughable. But the way that Candace Owens goes about doing this is to just flat out deny history. And the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. She literally just thanos historical facts like that because she didn't like them. Because they conflict and contradict the narrative that she's constantly trying to push. That easy. You don't like a historical fact? Didn't happen. But with that being said, her overall point is no matter how harmful that speech is, we should be allowed to exercise it. If you don't agree with me, that's perfectly fine. If you think I'm living in an alternate reality, that's my right. And I still have the right to express it and tell people about this alternate reality that I have constructed for myself. In fact, according to this cartoon she shared, she claims, quote, thought police have the highest records of brutality against the blacks of all time. Now I know what you're thinking. That's not even a coherent point. What is she even trying to say? Well, the overall point is she should be allowed to make whatever dumb point she wants. Freedom of speech, motherfucker. Either you like it or you don't. That's her point. Except you all know what I'm about to do, right? <laughs> We're going to share a quote from Candace Owens where she's going to completely contradict everything she previously purported to stand for when it comes to free speech. She tweeted, if I were president, the punishment for burning the U.S. flag would be the renunciation of citizenship. No jail time, no fine, simply one year to liquidate your assets and get the hell out of our country. In exchange, we'd extend citizenship to a hardworking legal immigrant. In other words, I don't like this form of free speech because it offends me. So let's ban it because I don't like it. And not only that, not only do I want to ban that form of free speech, 
I actually want to severely punish people by stripping them of their citizenship if they exercise that speech that I personally view as offensive. I mean, and the left is often called the snowflakes because... Why? Do you understand here? A so-called free speech advocate is saying, if somebody says something that offends me, they should lose their citizenship. How has the right not distanced themselves from her because she's clearly a fraud who is incredibly ignorant? But as Benjamin Dixon pointed out in a recent video, which I will link to, the reason why Republicans are refusing to distance themselves from her is because she basically says all the things that they want to say that would make them seem racist. That's why right-wingers still take her seriously. Because they need people like her. They need people like Dave Rubin to say, you know what? This homophobia, Stephen Crowder, it's perfectly acceptable. In fact, your homophobic jokes actually prevents violence because without jokes, I mean, there'd be violence in America. Candace Owens, she comes out here, she says, you know what? What the Republican Party is doing is the right thing. They're not actually the racists with these voter ID laws that disproportionately target black people. It's Democrats who are racist. Benjamin Dixon lays it all out in this video that you should definitely watch. Now, getting back to the issue of free speech, these right-wing grifters like Candace Owens and Dave Rubin, you see, they don't actually care about free speech in the sense that they want to defend the actual First Amendment. What defending free speech means to them is that as individuals, they should have the right to access whatever platform they want at any time. And if you deny them that platform, then you're obviously taking away their free speech and censoring them. And to them, if they don't get to speak on a particular college campus or they face resistance from some students, that's actually a more egregious violation of free speech than literal violations of the First Amendment like the anti-BDS laws that we're seeing pop up across the country, which brazenly violate the U.S. Constitution. Now, what's funny is that relating to this issue that Candace Owens brought up, this is already a settled issue. In 1989, the Supreme Court held in Texas v. Johnson that flag burning is a protected form of of speech. Even Justice Scalia, a far-right justice, held that this was protected speech. But I don't even know why I'm talking about that, because that would assume that they care about actual First Amendment issues, when to them, all they care about is them being able to go on these platforms and college campuses and speak and boost their name recognition and, as a result, get more money get more sponsorships, they get more popular, that is directly correlated with the money that they make. But what's funny is that they talk about college campuses and how these SJWs are ruining the country. But what they actually don't tell you, or maybe what they don't know, is that if you're looking at censorship on college campuses, it is an issue. However, it's just not an issue for conservatives. Because even if they're constructing this narrative that suggests that they're the victims when it comes to censorship on college campuses, do you want to know who's actually being censored more frequently? Left-wingers. They are terminated far more frequently for political speech than their conservative counterparts. But yet, they're the victims. And simultaneously, they're the true defenders of free speech. I mean, we are actually living in George Orwell's dystopian future. Where... Facts don't matter at all. They no, have no bearing whatsoever in political discourse anymore. War is peace and freedom is slavery. Except the problem with citing Orwell is that they've appropriated that on the right as well. And if you don't buy into their alternate reality, then you're actually the one who's getting duped. I mean, the world has been flipped upside down. And they don't realize what these right-wingers are doing. They're taking this issue of SJWs on college campuses, and they're trying to convince you that this is the source of the polarization, of censorship, of all the issues that we have in the country. Meanwhile, they're not talking about actual threats to freedom of speech. Nobody on the right came to the defense of a teacher who refused to sign an anti-BDS pledge and was then fired. Who on the right called out Donald Trump when he said that you should be penalized for burning the flag? So you've got to understand that this is nothing more than a grift. 
These people don't actually have a core ideology. It's why people like Candace Owens and Dave Rubin were left-wing not too long ago. This is a grift. The money's on the right. It's on the right, and everyone can see it. It's why H.A. Goodman, for example, flipped and went from being a Bernie supporter and jumped to the opposite side of the spectrum and is now a Donald Trump supporter. It's because he knows the views are better, the clicks are better, you get more recognition from the right. Because think about this, like, how often do you see Diamond and Silk and these right-wing former YouTubers on Fox News? All the time. They actually have a career on the left Nobody ever brings on me to talk on MSNBC. Nobody talks to Kyle Kalinske that often. He was invited on Fox News twice. In fact, it's a shock that Jen Uger has been on CNN a couple of times over the past couple of months. It's genuinely shocking to see that. Because on the right, they elevate people. There's money there to be made. You can get a sponsorship by a right-wing billionaire if you try to prop up the status quo and say what they want you to say. But on the left... That's not necessarily the case. These people don't care about anything but money and popularity. They don't care about politics. Politics is just a vessel that allows them to monetize what they're doing. That's it. It's as simple as that. And Benjamin Dixon does a phenomenal job at laying out why this is the case and why people shouldn't just not take her seriously, but they shouldn't even engage with her. Because by putting her on the same level as other intellectuals on the left, we're legitimizing her and making it seem as if she actually has insight and an intellectual interest in conversing with us. When all this is about is name recognition and money. It's that simple. She's a fraud. These right-wing YouTubers, they all know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Don't fall for it.